Hey everybody, coming up on Sports Central, we have Frank Tiano from Top Gun, Tracy Mattis and Casey Whitlock from the USA Water Ski Hall of Fame, and NFL superstar, Mr. Ken Riley, with us today. Stick around for this edition of Sports Central. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson. To my right, Mr. Hank Longo. Hello, and Hank, great to see you again. Good seeing you again. Well, I just got razzed about not being on the show like once. Well, we're going to have fun today. <laughs> you know when you got us two guys up here, we're going to have a fun time. Great guests today. Oh it's going to be gosh. an exciting show. And of course, a big shout out to Echo Suites, our sponsor for this first segment on Sports Central. Well, one of the coolest events that uh, takes place in Polk County, actually in the United States, because mm -hmm. it is the best. Radio controlled jets, um, yeah, I think that's what I can, what I yeah, can say, and are. airplanes, airplanes yeah. uh, in the world is right here at the Lakeland Linder Airport. And the guy that has put this all together actually moved up from West Palm to be in the aviation capital of Florida, and that is uh, Polk County, Lakeland Regional Airport, and of course home to Sun and Fun and everything yeah. else. Mr. Frank Tiano, uh, been with us a long time, great guy. There's nobody who knows more about this sport than, than he does. And Frank, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Again, one of our favorite guests to just jump in and keep visit talking. Us when it's you always can. nice to hear you. Just keep, us, keep <laughs> rattling on all these nice things about you. Anything know? else you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank, you've got a big event coming up May 1st through the 5th, a uh, five day event. And it's uh, always really, really impressive. That, you know, and what really surprised I don't know, I guess surprises a lot of people when, when they talk to me about this, or the number of people that come out not only to participate, but just to watch. I mean, this is cool stuff. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's interesting <clears throat> to see or to hear the comments from people who have never seen it before. Uh, men, women, young, old. Uh, it's like, wow, I never knew this existed. You know, people think of model airplanes as um, something with a string on them. You go round and round and fall down and go boom, <laughs> being busy. Yeah. yeah. And then they see these things the size of a car, you know, that that perform like just like a full size airplane, and uh, they're they're in awe. Yeah. You know, you you hit that one right on the head when you said that they are the size of a car. And when you think of a radio controlled airplane, you know, if you're in a hobby store, you're seeing them in a box about yeah. this big, you know, and flying them around in your backyard, but when they're as big as a car uh, and you see them flying, it's almost, it's, it's hard to tell that they're not a real jet airplane. And it's the jets mostly that get that big, aren't they? Yeah, uh, this year for the f first or second time, we will have some um, propeller driven airplanes that are larger than the jets we've had in the past. We have a couple of them coming that are one half the size of the full size airplane. Oh my so God. they're going to be quite large, quite heavy, mm -hmm. very powerful, um, some of them with two engines. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Well, the, you know, when you talk about something that big, Frank, there's, there has to be power behind them to do the maneuvers just to get them off the ground, sure. for heaven's sakes. Um, what kind of thrust do these uh, RC jets the, uh, have? The bigger airplanes are now weighing about 125 pounds. As opposed to when we first came to Lakeland, the largest airplane we had was 55 pounds. Wow. Uh, and a 500cc four-cylinder motor mm -hmm. puts, about a, puts out about 75 to 80 pounds of thrust. So it's almost one-to-one. -one. So, and you don't need one-to-one -to, -one to fly, obviously. Yeah. You got a Piper Cub flew on 36 horsepower, right? It's with yeah. two people in it. So, <laughs> um, so, and the jets are one-to-one -one and better thrust. So we're limited by law to 200 miles an hour, but in Europe, where there is no l law, uh, they're at 400 plus miles per hour. Wow. Oh my gosh, in a radio controlled yeah. plane. The problem is they're so fast that they get away from you so quickly. Think about it, in a heartbeat, they're a, a dot. Yeah. So you gotta be really on top of. So somebody that's piloting this plane really you gotta, has you, to be at a very high skill level, because what happens no. if the plane gets away from you? You can't. Well, you, you, Yes, that's why they don't do it here in this country. Yeah. That's exactly 
Because yeah, yeah. literally in three seconds, it's you know. So you got to really know what you're doing. Your instant reflexes. Mm -hmm. Frank, where is the event this year? The event is at the south end of Lakeland Airport. Mm -hmm. The entrance is off West Pipkin Road. Uh, the actual it has an address now, 4999 Air Show Road. Wow. Wow. So that I mean, you put in the GPS and boom, right to the gate. Say it again, 4999. 4999 Nine. Air Show, Show Road. Road. Okay. And it's off of West Pipkin. Just uh, not, not too far from the Geico building, not too far from County Line Road. Okay. Yeah, know exactly where that is. And of course, Sun and Fun, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, well, a week ago, was a huge hit this year. And, you know, just people are, you know, it's, it's almost like we're, we're getting used to this, having this stuff, all this world class stuff going on Good. all the time. But, uh, you know, this event, you bring in flyers, uh, pilots. I shouldn't say flyers. I should say pilots from all over the, you know, the United States. Maybe. We have. Uh, it, it's 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 a. Uh, it has become the uh, largest in the world of its kind. Uh, Lakeland is now, uh, has been on five covers of magazines. Uh, of course, they're specific magazines mm -hmm. you know, for, for the industry. For the industry, uh, sure. Lakeland, RC capital of the world. That's kind of cool, really? you know. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we we have pilots from teams from Thailand, uh, all over South America, uh, Germany, Serbia, England, France, Italy, uh, Singapore, China, for the first time this year, China. Wow. Uh, everywhere, everywhere. We have 160 uh, classes, of which there's 125 pilots. So a couple guys are flying two classes. So let, let's talk about the classes. There's a, I mean, not only do you have the different classes, but in conjunction with that, there's an el educational element involved in this, whereas the, um, the people that come to the event can go through the pits. Am I correct yes, with that? Yes, our, our $10 admission, and kids under 12 don't pay, but our includes parking and includes a pit pass. So you walk around right up into the tents where the guys are working on their airplanes or getting them ready. Um, we even provide a couple thousand chairs. Just sit down right at the flight line. The biggest thing, not the biggest thing, but one of the things about Top Gun that's unusual, every airplane there is a model in a certain scale, whether it's half scale, third scale, quarter scale, of a specific airplane in real life. For an example, maybe someone is flying a fighter airplane that your dad flew in World War II or the Korean <laughs> War or Vietnam or mm -hmm. and Whatever. everything from World War I biplanes with the wires and fabric mm -hmm. up to last year we had a B-2 bomber. Wow. So, And so when you get up into a, um, a B-2 bomber, I, I think the people will be a little shocked to know the expense and the investment that are put into a plane like that. The B-2 that. bomber is the most expensive model airplane ever made ever it's a flying wing as you know so it it has no it has no vertical rudders uh, uh, fins mm -hmm. so to keep it from it has the control surface is constantly moving with gyro gyroscopes yeah. to keep it like this uh, it cannot bank more than maybe 40 degrees because if it got any further than that there's no lift and now it's a piece of paper yeah. <laughs> Wow. So, so the one that came from Thailand last year and may come this year is a sixty-five thousand dollars. Oh, oh my gosh, that's unbelievable! Sixty-five thousand dollars for an mm -hmm. RC jet. But then again, so and the guy's divorced. Yeah. And so let's go to the, to the the opposite spectrum here. So there are people that are coming into this event that uh, have a little more affordable planes. Oh fly. well, that is the extreme. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a World War One. Airplane of a of a British or French Newport. You remember those? You know, would be yeah, maybe. I, uh, I flew one. <laughs> yeah, so for, yeah, in fact, one has your name on it. Um, might be a hundred inch wingspan. You know, a little over uh, nine, uh, close to nine feet, and it might only weigh thirty pounds, and maybe have five hundred hours in it, but in actual cost, maybe uh, eight hundred bucks. Wow. So. Wow, and it's amazing. And you win the award. If you win that class, you win the same size award as the guy with the B2. Okay, well, what do you win? How does this work to, to you know? Scoring criteria, yeah. Yeah, you know, how the, do you, how the, do you uh, win the event? Every airplane is 
judged for its fidelity to scale. So the uh, participant, the contestant, has a booklet with pictures and diagrams of the full-size airplane, and it's set 15 feet away from a panel of three judges. They look at it, they score it up to 100 points. How accurate, how accurate are the colors? You know, what does it look like? What is the craftsmanship? They do a good job, mm -hmm. and they get a score. Okay, let me interrupt real quick. When you say the craft, are you hand, are they hand this? making this? We have time for all. Yeah, we'll, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, they'll, they'll tell us to, and we oh. keep on talking. Okay. You're they, fun. I don't want to you're cut fun. into the. No, you and I are okay. The but they get the hook for him. Okay. Yeah, they'll pull me out. They'll, <laughs> yeah, you'll see me just drop <laughs> out of this <laughs> right here, <laughs> like <laughs> on uh, Ellen. All of a sudden, I'll well, poof, disappear like on one of her things. But are they? Are they? Are there? Is there a kit for them to make this plane, or are they hand making yeah. it from scratch? Some of them, you, some of them, you can buy a kit. Some you buy a set of drawings, then you make your own parts. And some are very like the jets are all composite. You, they're not balsa wood. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the jet because it's so fast. If they made a turn, if they were ball, they would just disintegrate. So they're all carbon fiber, fiberglass, metal, and that's why they weigh so much. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, so the, yeah, the, and the kits are very expensive. You know, yeah. five, six thousand dollars for a kit. Jeez, Louise, man, hardly seems enough. <laughs> <laughs> hey Frank, before we let you go, one of the things we want to do is 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 make sure it's, uh, to get in um, off of uh, Paradise. It's at Paradise Field, Air Show Road, four nine nine nine, Air Show Road in Lake. Forty nine ninety nine. Forty nine ninety nine. Ten dollars a day. Kids under twelve are free. And uh, well, the kids aren't free, but they get in for free. Okay. Well, they never are free. No. Well, some <laughs> okay, we'll keep the, come on, keep this rolling, just so I can see this getting all. <laughs> and, and, and pit passes and parking, you know, that's all included, all which included. is really cool. Really okay. Included. And you have snacks, food and beverage. Huge food vendor. Huge. I love it. Ice you cream know. vendor, food. That, that's noon enough time, to get me out there. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, we break for one hour and do a noontime air show. Okay. So the competition stops, and we have the best pilots from all over the world come and do demos that will blow you away. And this is on? Saturday and Sunday only. Saturday okay. and Sunday. And the event only. itself is May 1st through the 5th. Yep. If people want more information, um, where can they go? If what, they typed in Top Gun Lakeland, it comes up about a million times. Okay. Well, fantastic. And one more quick question. The time during the day, which? Daylight you know, hours. Daylight. Well, it's all day. You can't fly at night. Yeah. Okay. But 8.30 I mean, to 6, okay. 5.30. Okay. So you can make your... Uh, you can still get your senior citizen discount at, at, at Golden Corral. Let you in for free, actually. Pardon? They might let, let you in for free. They let me in when for free. Hey, drive, I mean, you know, I mean, all the shots. Know, I'm going to get some. I know, too. I, know the, I know the man. I know the man. So I've got tickets already. So <laughs> well, I'm all taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Frank. Wow, what a treat to have you on as always. It's a, a fantastic event, and it's great for the family, too. This is a family-friendly event, and yeah. there's a type of stuff that we, you know, really want support here in Polk County. Exactly. And it's really a, uh, one of the reasons it makes it a special place to live, so thank you, and thank you for this tremendous event, and uh, we're going to see you real Wish soon. Wish you the best. Always love having you on Look the show. Look forward to a it. Thank you for having me. And we'll tell stories. You're going to stick around, because I know you got a story to yes. tell. So we more fun even after the show. But, hey, one... Other sport that we're famous for in Polk County is soccer. We Absolutely. Well, the largest out. sports governing body in the state of Florida is based right at Lake Myrtle, and that's the Florida Youth Soccer Association, and they have more than 114,000 registered kids and 24,000 coaches and officials. It is absolutely it's huge. It's well, amazing. one of the top events, or the top event for the state of Florida is called the President's Cup held out at Lake Myrtle and at other places because it is so large. We have some great footage from last year, everybody. Check this out. Hank and Mark will be back with more Sports Central right after this. What you have here this weekend is actually teams from all around the nation. All 50 states are actually represented with some type of team or representative from U.S. Youth Soccer. It's the national governing body for which the Florida Youth Soccer Association is a part of. Uh, President's Cup is actually part of a multi-tier championship series where teams uh, from communities all the way up to state level participate for a chance to uh, get the coveted championship title. So that's what we have here at Lake Myrtle this weekend and we're expecting anywhere between five to 10,000 people uh, that includes players, fans, and administrative officials as well.
this is the culmination of an entire year of, of soccer. These teams started out last last August um, playing in their their leagues and their their various tournaments. Um, they advanced to their state tournaments, um, won their state tournaments, and then advanced to the their regional tournaments, and in turn won their regional Presidents Cup tournament. And now the, the, those teams have advanced to the National Presidents Cup event here, and this is where we where we crown national champions in um, ten different gender age groups. So this is, a, for some players, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. They have a chance to win a national title here, a U.S. Youth national title, um, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an arduous process. I mean, like, like I mentioned, I mean, you have to win two other tournaments. You win a state tournament and your regional tournament to make it to this national tournament. In each, group, each age group, there's, there's four teams from the four different regions that U.S. Youth Soccer has. So it's a, it's, a, it's a process, and this is the best of the best, and that's why it's, it's for, for a national title. If you're one of the 40 teams that actually wins the title this year, you get to carry that title with you. Obviously, that comes with uh, bragging rights to some degree. You're able to take home the coveted President's Cup trophy home with you as well. But not only that, but you get the chance to defend your title in the upcoming year as well, too. So it's it's a great team cooperation, but it also encourages, you know, self-importance and the need for the team aspect. And it all, all leads up to the big chance for them to do it again next year. In playing any team sport, soccer included, um, you know, the, the camaraderie, learning to work together in a cooperative environment, and, um, you know, again, learning to compete, um, not just on the athletic field, but in life is, is, a, is, a, is a big, important thing. I mean, we're a competitive society, whether you like to uh, acknowledge it or not, and uh, kids learning how to work in, in team atmospheres, which is really part of the business world now, too, um, can serve them on and off the field as they, uh, as they grow older. It's called a beautiful game because it is a beautiful game. I mean, it's 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 a it's a low-scoring game of skill that that can be played literally by anyone. So we it's 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 just enjoyable to watch. It's very infectious. It gets in your blood. Everybody and welcome back to Sports Central. You're just joining us. I'm Mark Jackson, along with Mr. Hank Longo. Hello, everybody, and we want to thank the folks at Harborside for sponsoring our second segment here on Sports Central. Yeah, and make sure when you get out there, you say hi to Dave and Don, the two owners, and uh, great people. Um, man, the food out there is outstanding. Too. And just what a beautiful just setup to be able to sit out on Lake Howard and look out over the ship. lake and Lake Ship, Lake yep. Ship, yep. and. Uh, Enjoy beautiful Central Florida. Oh yeah, especially around sunset. You know, it's one of the best views in all of uh, all of Florida. Yeah. You know, it's just uh, absolutely gorgeous place. Food is outstanding. So yeah. uh, kudos to them. Well, well, speaking of kudos, we've got a lot of big kudos coming up yes. with the USA Water Ski Foundation, USA Water Ski and Wake Sports Foundation. That is Hall of Fame. It is coming up in just a few days, mm -hmm. and Hank, um, this is the uh, water ski capital of the world here in Polk County. What an appropriate place yeah. to hold the, the Hall of Fame and, and uh, to have the Hall of Fame as part of our not only our heritage, but our, uh, our movement going forward in the area of sports and the sports industry. It is yes, some it exciting, is. exciting times, and here to share it. So what's happening, uh, not only with the Hall of Fame that's coming up next week, but also with uh, the transition from their current location to Lake Myrtle, which uh, uh, with the cable park and uh, bounce area going in, this is going to be something else. Tracy Mattis, welcome aboard. Thank you, yeah, happy well, to be here. Well, well we're happy to have you too. Here. We're trying to get Casey Whitlock on the show, but she uh, respectfully declined because we didn't want Hank being jealous over my girlfriend. So oh, well, <laughs> we'll bring her on next time. Yeah. We'll keep that private. Well I guess Holy it's not anymore. Moly. <laughs> Surprise his nose that he's gotta grow out there a little bit with that one, but <laughs> Here, moving right, right along, along here. Tracy. Tracy, glad to have you on the show. Well, the big day is Saturday, um, April 27th. Yes. You know, this is yes. an annual affair, and uh, uh, it's something that is celebrated in the water ski world. Actually, not, not just here in the United States, but it's it's really worldwide. We have people too. coming in from all over the world, and, yeah. and this is our biggest one by far. We're nearly at 600 people. Wow. And it's um, we've got some people that with strong Poe County ties, Parks Bonifay, and of course a lot of the Barefooters, Lane Bowers, John Cornish. Uh, 
Don Mixon Sr., there's such ties to that World Barefoot Center right here in Poe County. And, and then we've got Mark Bozovic and, uh, and Mark Richard as well. And it's, it's an yeah. uh, unbelievable class. And well, it's, well it's, it's fun for me because I got a chance to ski with uh, Mark Richard and, of course, okay. Tony Klarich off sure. and on. Would, and Tony would, uh, Klarich, yes. Yeah, yes. do a exactly. demo on the pro tour of his uh, slalom right. skiing expertise. And Bozovic, I remember from uh, uh, West Palm, you know, he's yes. real integral in, in a lot of major water ski terms, Lane and and uh, John Cornish, of course, as well. So yes. you've got a real stacked crew. In, we have and, an and, amazing and, class. And, yeah. And yeah. not just on the water, but these guys are incredible human beings that have yeah. done so much to give back in, in many ways. So it'll be an exciting night for everybody, inspiring. Well, Don Mixon, you know, one of the, uh, I, I, I want to say founders of the American Barefoot Club, right. which is one right. of the sports mm -hmm. divisions. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, Parks Bonifay. I remember his ski baby you right. know, when I was skiing yeah. at Cypress Gardens. We you have know, some pictures of that. Yeah, so it's you know, really nice, you know yeah. out there with his diaper. Yes, but yeah. uh, they're basically <laughs> exactly what it was. So it up was, on the water. It was yeah. funny, yeah, because his mom and dad both skiers at mm -hmm. Cypress Gardens, Betty and, and he Betty was and, uh, Pete. Betty and Pete, mm -hmm. he was on That's Incredible, and yeah. I had that little link being on That's Incredible yeah. with the Bonifay. So that's how I kind of got to know them, and right. and our friendship developed over the years. And then I started actually coaching Parks. Uh, in three events skiing and he was a heck of a jumper and uh, was in his last year of boys two runner up in the nationals behind Joey Blakely and uh, left three events skiing went into wakeboarding mm -hmm. and the next thing you know this guy is a junior world champion mm -hmm. and the athletic ability that he has is, is amazing and then his story goes on to where you know he became one of the West best wakeboarders in the world, the world, world champion, masters champion, incredible. you know, won it all. So yeah. it's going to be fun to, to hear yeah. his story. And that's the neat yeah. thing is really listening to everybody's story. Well, Tracy, a lot of our viewers um, out there in the, mm -hmm. in the viewing area are water skiers or former water skiers yes. and want to know more about where can, you know, hey, they know parks. They know right. some of these lane. They know some of these guys that have Polk County connection, Mark right. Richard and so on and would like to attend how do they do that they can go to our website uh, www.usa-wwf.org that's a lot of letters or they can they can call the office i mean it's okay. if, you, if you just google our organization all of the contact information comes up usa water ski foundation yes. mm -hmm. usa okay. water ski and wake sports foundation and the website's there the phone we're there answering the phones and taking registrations and and um, yeah we'd love more people to come i mean it's exciting that this is the biggest one in history ever and yeah. um, that really says a lot for not just the class but the event itself as well there's a second function too that yes. uh, if if uh, Saturday doesn't work out for some right. people there's a social we have the Hall of Fame social the night before which mm -hmm. is Friday and it's out at the new site 330 Denton Avenue and um, the Lake Myrtle Sports the Lake Complex Myrtle, yep the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex and um, it's really exciting. What we're doing is we're giving, we have such a big crowd coming that we're giving them a sneak preview. We're having, of course, the opening of the cable park and everything a month later, but we want to give them an opportunity to walk through, see the, the cafe, the pro shop, sit on the water, see the docks, see where the aqua park is going to be. The cables will be up. They're putting the features on the water today and tomorrow. Okay. So they're doing landscaping starting Sunday through next Tuesday. So it's going to, it's it's really coming along and it's it's looking nice. And of course, you know it was just, there was an old house, a barn, and a lot of trees there, and yeah. to see it turn into what it is as a complement to the Lake Myrtle Sparks Parks, bringing the on-the-water aspect is, is going to be really exciting for us, for anyone in water sports, and, and the community in general. I, we were talking earlier, sitting on that, that deck overlooking the water where the restaurant is is just going to be fantastic for yeah. the whole community yeah. to be involved. Well, it opens up the opportunity for um, wh whoever, kids, adults, that you know, can't afford a boat or don't have access right. to a boat, that mm -hmm. with the cable park, it gives them the opportunity to to be able to For ski, be able to, to you know, wakeboard or, right. around. And exactly. it's, a, it's a big cable right. course. I mean, it takes it's up big. a, you know, a good portion of the lake where you're just not riding around in a little circle. You're actually going for a nice ride. You can hit nice the features. Ride. I mean, they've got the two tower for young kids just starting, mm -hmm. or they've got, you know, the big six tower with the big features and ramps on the water. So, and they can run that thing as slow as you want or, or the speeds of a boat to hit those, hit those ramps. So it really opens it up to the every kid and lets them get on the water and experience, you know, everything we all love on the water here. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's almost like Texas style jumping. You remember mm -hmm. when you'd, you'd cut from, you'd cut from, from left, uh, to right. left to right. Instead of right to left. left. Yeah, that was, uh, 
Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> those, were the, those were the days, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> and you know, the, the thing that's neat about the Hall of Fame weekend coming up is uh, just all the disciplines coming, coming together. together to celebrate it's as like one sport. Yes. It's like yes. the Academy Awards yes, of water really skiing. Yes. We've got the red carpet, mm -hmm. and it's fun for me because uh, representing Sports Central, PGTV, sports marketing, I get to interview the people yeah, on the red carpet. Yeah, but you're a Hall of Famer, though, too. Well, yeah, you thank both you. are in the, yeah. our alumni. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the red carpet's fun to talk right. to everybody as they come in and yes. all the celebrities in yeah. the sport. It's fantastic. Right. And then mm -hmm. uh, to hear everybody's story. And, and for me, the fun thing is on Saturday, you get uh, to interview I get to interview yeah. all the yes. inductees for the Hall of Fame video yes. library. And everybody has the same story in mm -hmm. the sense that no matter how great they were, they are all so humbled, humbled. by right. being inducted and uh, it, it makes you go back and look at your whole career and how it started and the people that helped you and right. the, the things that you know catapulted you to the next level and to hear those stories is amazing yeah. and then of course on Saturday night you get to, so you get to you hear, get to hear them, them again. talk about it. Yeah. I have the honor of producing the show for it and I, in doing so I really get to know them and their stories and and the stories behind the stories, mm -hmm. you know, everyone kind of knows there, but you hear, like you say, the things they've overcome or the people that have jumped in to help them, the people that have got them where they are. Those, the, it's, it's really amazing, it's really inspiring, and uh, we look forward to it every year, being able to. Oh, no, that, that's fantastic. That. Well, it's what, what, it's what yeah. makes this area the water ski capital of the world, there's right. no question about yeah. it. And, you know, it's a sport that in 1972, um, well, it's during the Olympics, mm -hmm. um, it was the same year that the uh, uh, terrorist attack on the on the Olympic Games, right. and, and Ricky McCormick was yeah. a gold medal winner from Polk County, right. and uh, you know we have all his stuff up in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Which, yes. uh, yeah. And the, and when I say uh, the Hall of Fame, of course he's in the Water Ski Hall of Fame, but he's also in, in the Polk the, County the Sports Polk Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame. Absolutely. Well, and a neat, real quick note about the museum is we're, we're debuting at the Hall of Fame the first video that shows the inside of the the new museum, the new Hall of Fame, and, okay. and the new office, and it's neat. It's I understand really, he might be helping a little so bit. So yeah, that. he is. Hank's been a great help, and <laughs> as he's been you. to your museum and the Polk County, and yeah, it should be crazy. So that one. it's. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That went in the Florida mm -hmm. Sports Hall of Fame yes. too. It's, yeah. a, so it's an kind honor. Kind of getting a nice resume there. Oh, well, thank right. you. It's mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, I mean, just the, we're currently designing the Wisconsin, Wisconsin Water Ski Tommy Hall of Fame Museum. Yeah. Be did that photo work, Andrews. by the way? Yeah. Yes, it did. I've got Mr. Jackson, who is in the Wisconsin Water Ski Hall of Fame. Um, I am designing a new museum for them that's at the entrance of the Tommy Bartlett Ski Show, where you skied for years and really got your kickoff to the. Yeah. Show ski world there before you We've know. We've got some neat pictures coming, of you in, in the time in your Tommy Bartlett days. Oh, and so. <laughs> in her out of jail. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so, and and the other neat thing that I like to share is how humbling it is that as you go through the memorabilia, mm -hmm. you're hanging on and touching things that you know are of the your heroes in the sport, sport. the superstars in the sport mm -hmm. and we have hundreds of trophies that right. um, uh, when I disassembled the museum and, and stored them all to hold on to a trophy from like the world championships, championships. in 1958 and mm -hmm. it's just uh, it's an incredible experience humbling and, and very very honored to, to be a part of that. Well, Tracy Mattis, Executive Director of the USA Water Ski and Wake Sports Foundation, and the Hall of Fame coming up next weekend. It's, uh, it's going to be yeah, an exciting excited, time, yeah. and thanks so much for taking time out of your busy, hectic I mean, week, yeah, day, yeah, and <laughs> months, it's days, crazy, and yeah. months, and yeah. all of the rest of that stuff. So it's really coming together. Tracy, congratulations. Thank you. To you and the board. I mean, Thank it's you. been yes, a uh, delight Casey to work with you guys. And my assistant, scenes, Casey, who's, who is really just a Godson with a lot of the tedious yeah. administrative, you all know what that's like yeah, to have yeah. that kind she of works support. Her tail off great. To help she does. As well, well she, yes. we, we always love working with Casey and you too. So thanks thank so much you. for joining us. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, everybody, that's uh, some great stuff once again is happening in here. In fact, we have uh, three water skiers in the room that are. Uh, former professional water skiers, Hank, myself, and there's a guy right behind that camera 
that uh, Russell. yeah, former skier and uh, boat driver at Cypress Gardens, Russell Daly, he and his wife, happy to ski with them. Well, anyway, we have some great footage coming up. We're going to switch gears a little bit because uh, this is really Polk County's showpiece when it comes to arts and cultural events. It's called Mayfair by the Lake, and uh, or Mayfair on the Lake. A lot of stuff going on with that, including a, a great race on Saturday night, music, and uh, this is a very special event. We have some very special footage for you. Stick around for more Hank and Mark and Sports Central. We'll be back. Mayfair came to be around 1971. Um, it was the Polk Museum of Art, and they were trying to do a fine arts festival on the shores of Lake Morton, and it's grown to what it is today. Today we have 160 artists here with many different mediums from sculpture and wood and paintings, oil and acrylic and glass. I mean, we have lots to offer for everyone. Artists have to apply to the show and they have to give us three examples of their artwork and um, apply uh, through an online uh, application. They are juried um, <clears throat> through five different jurors around Polk County and the highest score gets invited to the show. We have a judge that comes around, she is from out of state and she goes around to each one of the artist booths and checks out their artwork and the best of show will be picked along with a lot of other um, awards. It's my second year at uh, Mayfair. I do what I call abstract reality. It's a mix of realism, surrealism with some abstract designs. I mostly work in wood, doing wood burning and acrylic. There's a lot of diversity here. I mean, you have everything from contemporary to abstract to uh, experimental art, which I like. And there's different mediums. There's 3D uh, sculptures and clay. I mean, there's everything definitely for everyone. There are some like, sculptures with metal work and a combination of both. And it was just, it was really intriguing. It was really neat. And the technique that the gentleman used was really cool. And um, I, I like the jewelry, of course. So there's lots <laughs> of jewelry here for people to come out and see. And there's a lot of good stuff. I, I'm a digital artist. Um, it's all my work is hand drawn on the computer using a stylus, and then I combine different textures, wood, paper as a background element. Incorporate a lot of different design elements, colors, textures. 
Um, I've been doing digital art for over, over 10 years and then just started doing festivals about four, four years ago. It's definitely a good show, a lot of space mm -hmm. between the artists. Um, the people that run the show definitely take care of the artists. It's a very artist-friendly uh, environment, for sure. The kids tend, um, they are focusing this year on the five senses, so they are, um, they have a lot of crafts that involve the different senses so that everyone in, um, can enjoy the crafts and um, we brought it back down to the lake so that the kids can um, have more accessibility to the art show and, and the crafts there. There's many things to do outside of just looking at the art. There's entertainment on the library lawn throughout the day, Saturday and Sunday, we're open from 9 to 4. And then we also have a lot of food options for people. And we have Mayfairy golf carts to help out. My favorite part is seeing all the families that come out, um, especially the children that get to see all the different creative outlets that these artists bring. And um, it's just a great event to um, explore different mediums of art. I enjoy meeting all the artists and seeing all the different artwork and just the, hearing about the different techniques they use for their work. and. It's just neat seeing how it all comes together. Well, as an artist, I would definitely try it. I mean, it's definitely a, wor a show worth doing. And then, I mean, as a spectator, I mean, yeah, definitely come out and support, you know, art that's in your community. And I would definitely come out. It's a it's beautiful setting. Um, Lakeland's a cool, cool city, so. It's a great art. Uh, the setup is great. It's around the loop of the lake, so it's very easy. You can, you cannot miss a tent. You can't miss a booth. And it's a nice walk, you know, around, around the lake. I think the art community is very large in Lakeland and in Polk County, and I think um, we have a lot of local artists as well as some from out of state. But from throughout Central Florida, we have such a large group of artists, and just we have a lot of talent. We think you know year after year, more and more people see that they can bring their artwork to one location and just get a large crowd in front of them, and it's been a great opportunity for them. everybody and welcome to segment number three of Sports Central. Mark Jackson and Hank Longo. Wow, what uh, some great stuff. Uh, fantastic stuff, some fantastic guests and we have, I don't know if we're saving the best for last, but he certainly is uh, known worldwide and just on right and uh, should be in the Hall of Fame and NFL. Uh, we want to thank the Ledger for sponsoring this third segment of Sports Central where we get to talk to superstar Hall of Famer Mr. Ken Riley. Absolutely. Well, everybody, you know, one of the things we do have to uh, talk about is the, the plethora of, of talent, superstar, world-class talent that comes out of this county. It is uh, really, you know, it's an honor to be here. Yeah. But it's more of an honor to have this gentleman with us. Ken, great to see you, and I know that you have been running. You've been running your whole life, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's very fast. But you were at uh, uh, Forrest Gregg's. Uh, funeral the last couple of days and uh, just got back in and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you Mark and Hank it's an honor to be here and yeah I just 
got here yesterday for the Forest Greg's funeral. And uh, matter of fact, the weather that was there is coming back down this way. So it was <laughs> some bumpy rides. Following, yeah. following me on down it was a bumpy <laughs> ride. But uh, great guy. Uh, Vince Lombardi said probably his greatest player ever. And we had uh, Mike Brown and, and a lot of celebrities and people who uh, came and uh, was there for him, for him because he was well loved and respected by, by all. David Baker from the NFL Hall of Fame mm -hmm. committee, he was there, he spoke, James Lawson. So I was one of the Paul Bears. It was, uh, it was just great for me. He gave me my first coaching job, you know, really? as an assistant coach with the Green Bay Packers. So uh, a lot of respect for him and he'd be yeah. sorely missed. I know a lot about you, but I did not know that you were an assistant coach with the Packers. Yes, because, two you know, years. Because, uh, you know, being from Wisconsin, that's kind of, <laughs> you, you bleed green and gold. Right, right, right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you know, this is, you're like the, the perfect dream come true story. And I know we're, we're going to talk about your, your, your tournament coming up, but um, such an inspiration for young kids to, to believe in their dream because uh, starting out, uh, weren't you at Union Academy when that first started? And, uh, and, and for a young kid to go to a small school here in Bartow to make it to the biggest stage in the world playing um, in the NFL is just a remarkable story. It is. The Union Academy is a little small school. We had about 500 students. That's from elementary all the way up to the high school. We had 11 guys to go actually and play professional football. It's a secret that a lot of people don't know. We probably produce more NFL players than any school in Polk County, probably in the state at that particular time. So uh, it was a great honor uh, to you know, go from that little school and go and, and reach the highest level in professional sport. That's an honor. To you two guys, I didn't really realize how <laughs> special you were at skiers. So <laughs> congratulations for Hall of Famers in that. But yeah, Thank it was. You. It was an honor, and I was just happy to be a part of uh, that legacy at that particular time. Yeah, that was that that was unbelievable. Yeah, you know, and, and the talent, like you said, eleven NFL players. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's this is not like going, you know, to play for the Gators, which is an honor, but mm -hmm. you're talking the, the best of the best in the on the planet. And Ken, what would you tell to a, I mean, a young kid? You must have been dreaming about this ever I since did. you can remember. I did. You know, and and. And for that young kid that's a dreamer like you, what, what's the best advice you could give them if they want to try to make it to that level in the sport? Well, you're right. I, this is no joke. I dream every step of the way. I dream because we had a great uh, high school football program and we won championships every year. And I wanted to follow them and, and be like the guys that were before me. And uh, I, I played in the band starting in sixth grade so I could follow the football team, you know, the band. Because <laughs> my parents didn't go to the game, so I, I joined the band. I played up until about ninth, tenth grade. And then I went out, my high school coach uh, was, was married to my uh, aunt at the time, and Claude Woodruff. He's the one, oh, number six is played in the band, so he got me to come out. And he, they watched you all the way in sixth grade, Pete Lawrence, you know, the, the, the athletes, you know, you played the little games in elementary, and he was giving them your name all the way up. And uh, I was one of the ones that he said, you need to get out now. And I, and I wanted to play like in. He said, no, you're going to be a quarterback. That's a pretty good student, too. And I uh, started from there. I played there, finished there, and went on to FAMU as a quarterback and uh, went to the pro draft in that sixth round. And Paul Brown switched me at that particular time. He said, no, you're a cornerback. And I played 15 years, so very successful. That's amazing. I mean, that but is dream, amazing. But dream, dream, but follow your dreams, and don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. They say you're too small, you can't do this. Don't let anybody deter you from your dreams. Exactly. You just have to believe in yourself. You have yourself. to believe in yourself. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and the other thing, too, I think you have to have some self-discipline and surround yourself with people of likeness who was trying to aspire to be somebody. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah, you want to you want to hang yourself with good positive, good, positive people, people that are going to reinforce you and 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 discipline. I mean, it, you know, when you're at that level, there's so much celebrity that goes with that that you have to be disciplined enough to block all that out. And when it's game night, you got to be in bed on time, and right. you, you've got to be disciplined and in, in your reading and your training. And uh, although it's big show business, I. You know, never being there, I would think that the athletes that shine are the ones that 
block everything else out that's on the outside and just focus on what's going on on the on the field. Well, you there. You've been there. <laughs> you had Mark, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And what you're saying is true in every sport. You have to have some self-discipline. You got to be dedicated. You got to make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to give up some of the things that you like the most in order to make it happen. So that's all part of it. Everything you said is very true. Well, well, let's let's move on to the to the uh, golf to charity. the tournament. Yes. Well, yeah, but it's a celebrity golf tournament. You got yes, Archie Griffin who's been here yeah. and two time Heisman winner. You know, winner. from different sports, you got Otis Birdsong who's just a delight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you know, just. But guess who's coming this year? Sam Jones, old Boston Celtics guard. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> He's going to be here this year. And also the guy who wrote Breaking the Line, uh, Sam Freeman. I'm going to give you guys a copy of this book. Oh, wow. Wow. And, uh, Thank you. Here, hand me that. I'm going to yeah. hold that he, up for, uh, for Russ here. Yeah. If, uh, I don't know. Russ, can you zoom in on that a little bit? Maybe. Yeah, there we, we go. go. Breaking the Line. Yeah, he's going to be here. I've been trying to get him for the last couple of years. So he's finally coming this time. So he's going to be here to sign some autographs. and. Uh, he did a story about the uh, civil rights movement and how football played a part in making this happen. So it's, it's a great read, and uh, he's gotten a lot of accolades from it, and uh, That's we're cool. happy to have him come and be a part of, of this as, as well. That's fantastic. Even the even, uh, endorsement from uh, Sports Illustrated. Oh, yeah, it, it was, a, yeah. Well, it says, the season in black college football that transformed the sport and changed the course of civil rights. This would be a good read. It's mm -hmm. a great read. Yeah. And James Harris and I, was, we played, he played for Grambling that particular time. Mm -hmm. I was from FAMU, and they talk about Jake Gaither and, uh, you know, Eddie Robinson and how that game, uh, because at that time, you could, well, it's a good read. You couldn't go and stay in some of the hotels, and those teams did at that time. It was one of the things that... Yeah, uh, it was, it was very uh, prominent during the civil rights movement, and this played a part in it, the role in it. Yeah, well, once again, sports playing a big role in that. So. Yes, yeah, sports. Exactly. So it's well, it's just like uh, you know we uh, we talk about the Olympics being the, yeah. sp uh, the event that brings country. You know, yes. All the countries on the planet together for one positive reason. Right. But it's sports. It's sports. You know, and, That's and true. you, That's and you bring true. that, and I love sharing this little story, but uh, uh, a few years back at the Senior World Championships, I got to ski in them and announce them, and we had teams from all over the world, 27 different countries, and everybody was there to ski. Yeah. Everybody had a great time. Right. Everybody cheered each right. other on. And it was one big family, and I go, boy, if the governments in the world could get exactly. along like the athletes <laughs> in the world, you That's know, right. we'd have a great place to live. Because right. everybody's the same, you know. Okay, I'm going to keep you on task today. I'm, <laughs> I mean, you just been, I'm just, just having well, fun. Well, we can sit here for two hours and talk with Ken. I mean, that's no problem at all. So the golf tournament, go, go ahead. No, take go it right away. ahead. I'm not going to take any of your thunder <laughs> away. Uh, that ain't happening. Ken, tell us about your charity golf tournament. Well, this is the fourth year we've been doing it. We, we have it at Cleveland Heights Golf Course, mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, registration start at 7 a.m. in the morning. We do it early because of the rain and, and things like that, but uh, we have a meet and greet that Friday night on the 3rd uh, with celebrities to get a chance to uh, interact with them. They tell their story, and a lot of people are really uh, impressed with some of the stories that these guys have and, and where they came from, how they got there, where they're going, and where they've been. So it's, it's a great opportunity for people to come and see them firsthand. And most time they say, boy, I didn't know he was like these. Very nice guy, very humble guy. So it's good. And uh, we have a little entertainment. And uh, we have, like I said, a golf scramble the next day. Uh, you can go online, kr13.org, or you can just... Uh, Call 863-533-0431, uh, and that's my number, and uh, get in contact with me. But we're just happy to have it, and it's for the, for the youth in the community. We emphasize uh, the technical ridge and Travis. We work with them, but also higher education. We've given out scholarships, and we'll be giving out scholarships this year to those students uh, who aspire to go to school, whether it's higher education or in the technical field. Ken, tell us a little bit about the Ken Riley Foundation because that's the foundation of the golf tournament, <laughs> you know, yeah. really. But it's it's a great uh, organization, and and tell us a little bit about what that's all about. It started, I guess, about four years ago. Uh, we have a Union County Alumni Association, mm -hmm. and we did a golf tournament there. And one of the guys, Otto Brown, and 
uh, Burke said, man, you ought to do your own foundation because you're working with youth and uh, you, you, it's trying to encourage them to, to be more than what they can be. And some of the kids are on the street here locally look up to you and say, why don't you do the Ken Rowland Foundation? Mm -hmm. We started that four years and just like I mentioned earlier, we want to give our scholarships. We do a lot of speaking engagement. We work with uh, Eastside Positive Action Committee. We do a parent youth summer we just had about two Saturdays ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's all free. We have a horseback ride. We have uh, motivational speakers come in. We have people from the community, the county, the superintendent was there. Mm -hmm. We had the police chief there. And it's just a great time where we just talk about some of the things that's going to inspire and encourage students to be more than they can be. That's awesome. Well, Ken, thank you so much for sharing because education is, no matter what it is, without it's education, you're not going to be successful. And um, once again, uh, the day of the tournament uh, is uh, May 3rd is the silent auction. May 4th is the, the shotgun and breaking the line. Thank yes. you very much for uh, sharing that story with us. Let me repeat the us. website real quick, too, because this is, this is an opportunity. This if is you, great if stuff. you get a chance, it's kr13.org. And uh, Ken gave you his phone number a little bit earlier, so uh, make sure you check that out. Make sure you check out the, the, his foundation and everything else. And Ken, once again, thank you so much. Thank for you both. It's a board. treat having yeah. you. Yeah. You're yeah. my hero, so <laughs> it's great getting to have you on the and show. And should be in the Hall of Fame if any of yes. you folks have any uh, say in that one. We certainly expect it. Well, so, we have a guy by the name of Logan Fernandez, a uh, soccer player from, uh, you know, I have to check, Lake Region. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I had it in my head it was Lake Gibson. but. Logan is from Lake Region and uh, one heck of a soccer player. Well, he's our up close and personal athlete spotlight of the day of the week. So check this out. We'll be back with segment number four in our local update. Stick around, everybody. I started playing soccer when I was either three or four. I was really young but I loved it already, even when I was little. I remember a little bit. I remember um, it was funny watching, well, thinking about it now back, it's just funny watching like all the little kids and thinking like, oh, that used to be me playing like that, like playing at such a young age, and it's so funny to watch. There's just so much I love about soccer. It teaches you just so much about not only the sport, but just life, how to deal with challenges, um, leadership, um, Learning to bond with your teammates, you get so many friendships throughout playing, it's crazy. You know you'll have them for the rest of your life and that's really great. I think a soccer player, not only do they need physical qualities like stamina and hard working, but they need to have good personality. Because you can be the best player, but if you don't have a great personality or you don't want to take the time to lead or patience, then that could definitely um, stop your team from like working together as they need to do. We sometimes we do fun things like we'll do kind of like a little team bonding before the game just to get us um, uplifted and just focused on the game and get ready while also having fun and being able to stay positive. I think every athlete sometimes faces challenges that make them question if they want to keep playing. But definitely for me, I just love the feeling, just being fit and being able to work with my teammates. I like love those girls, so being able to work with them is just so great. And I definitely have had obstacles. Last season I broke my ankle, but I've made a good recovery and I'm back, to, I'm back on the field and I still love it. I am a forward, so I went to go up to shoot the ball and the keeper came out at the same time and when she did, I went to shoot and she went to clear the ball and our ankles, our two, both of our feet just hit instead of her kicking the ball. It was tough. <laughs> yeah, it hurt. <laughs> I was, it was pretty difficult building um, muscle again because even that, I was out for a few months, but even then you could definitely tell um, that I needed to get back. Like my legs, you could see it actually in my legs that they were just smaller in general. So I had to rebuild the muscle. Physical therapy helped a lot. It just gained strength in my ankle and just within my body. So that helped a lot, helped me get back. I do a lot of running at home, um, a few miles around the neighborhood. Or I'll do, if I'm not here working out, I'll go either to a gym or do at-home workouts. Helping um, 
Working on your core helps a lot because it's like within your whole body. That's really important to me, is working just your whole body because soccer, it's not just a running sport or not just like a um, sport where you can stand around. Like there's a lot of running time. And so you definitely need the running, but you also need to just be physically strong so you can um, body up to people on the ball and not get pushed off. A big misconception I've heard about soccer is some people like to say it's not a contact sport. That is n not true at all because that soccer is so physical and unlike other sports you don't have padding or anything like that so you just have to be strong and play through everything. I would just say not to worry about everyone else. If you aren't the best or most experienced but you still love the game, I think that's all that matters because as long as you feel like you're improving yourself or you want to do it for you to build friendships and stuff like that, I think that's great. I think everyone that wants to play should try it. After high school, I'm still deciding if I want to play in college yet. If um, someone is looking at me, I definitely will consider. But um, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. But after, if I do play college or if I don't, I'm thinking about physical therapy. Because whenever I did break my ankle, looking at that, like that job seemed like something I would like a lot. Everybody, welcome back to Sports Central with Mark and Hank. And uh, wow, Hank, we've got uh, some, some great celebrities on the show today, but we oh, also have wow. some celebrity sponsors as well. Yeah, and we want to thank the folks at El Buelo's, one of our favorite places to eat, and uh, they're so good to us and just uh, a great partner of Oh, uh, Dean Andrews and the crew over there. I mean, some great food. That's, that's the best, best Mexican food, uh, Tex-Mex, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the entire Central Florida area. I just love you eating. You know, I just, I just have to say what a treat it is to have Ken Riley joining us because he is such a superstar and couldn't be a more nicer gentleman. There's just, there's no reason that he shouldn't be in the NFL Hall of Fame, but he's not a self-promoter. He is a humble, mm -hmm. kind man. And I, th I think that uh, may play a factor. You don't play 15 years in the NFL. And be as with, good as he is. And, and, and have you know, he wasn't just a player. He was a superstar. A superstar. Yeah, yeah. he's a superstar. Fourth off the in, field in too. what, interceptions all, overall? Anyhow, yeah. great story here. But we got a little bit of time to wrap up with some events coming up. Lakeland Tigers doing it big time. Now from the, uh, from the 20th to the 28th. 28th. They're going to have a game every day. Except, except for, for the 21st. Except for the 21st. And they're bringing back. Thirsty Thursdays. Thursdays. Oh, man. I gripe, hot dog. Well, I think I gripe for like four or five years, and finally they're bringing back Thirsty <laughs> Thursdays. You, you, you petitioned long enough that oh, they had gosh. to they yeah. had Ron to Myers, succumb. thank you very much, and Zach Burek, we appreciate it. You know, Hank, a uh, place that you de you know helped design and, and ran for a long time was a visitor information center at, up in Davenport yep. at I-4 and 27. Easter egg hunt coming up. Uh, Saturday, they have some tomorrow. great family events up there, and they do such a great job, that whole crew up there, Justin and company, but the Easter Bunny has uh, hidden eggs all around the visitor center, so a great opportunity for Hope they're you faster than to you. go visit, <laughs> can, can, can get up there, and uh, uh, there's a chance to find a golden egg, which will have two tickets to Legoland, Florida, and a silver egg, which will have two tickets to Bach Tower, so uh, some fun things to, to win if you make it up there. And don't forget up there. up there as well, on uh, April 20th, we've got the Tiger Trot 5K. Make sure you check that out. Hank? Well, we want to talk about the Homeschool World Series. Oh. That's coming up. And then our, our sponsors. Our director is telling us is he's going to get the hook out if you don't do the sponsors. Okay, here we go. I'm going to wrap this up real quick for you, Spark. Party Rentals Unlimited, Hall Communications, Hampton Inn, Bartow, Jimmy John's, and Hollywood Wind and Tinning. Thank you so much for your support. Absolutely. And don't forget our sister show on uh, WLKF. Great station, 1430 AM, and that's on Thursdays. And, of course, 96.7 FM. And you can hear uh, Hank and I and some of the others uh, off and on. Great opportunity there, everybody. And... You know, our next live show is going to be May 10th, Hank, and it's just hard to believe. It's, it's May already. It, that, it's, that it's May. I mean, it's just worded that. First half of this year, you know, go. I don't know, but, you know, we've been really, really blessed. But the, that Homeschool World Series, if, if you don't mind, I want to jump back to that uh, for just a second. That's the 27th through May 3rd, and it's an opportunity for you to see the best homeschool baseball players in the world. And don't forget, the, who was the best uh, homeschool athlete ever come out of uh, Florida? Tim Tebow. Yeah. So there's some real talent there, and it's a great opportunity. Well, everybody, again, May 10th, our next live show. 
Thanks so much for joining us, and thanks so much to the great crew at PGTV, all the, the production and the, and the filming and the editing. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you again next time.